Hey everyone, we're back in the video, and today we're talking about Oliver Ekman Lawson. He has been bought out by the Vancouver Canucks after they had a trade deal, which has been quite interesting. Um, but the um, Arizona Coyotes, obviously the Coyotes signed to that eight-year deal, and that deal, obviously, the Coyotes want to move on from. They wanted to start the rebuild. They moved on from a bunch of guys. And now they find themselves, um, the Canucks find themselves in, like, cap trouble. Like, what do we just give up here <laughs> for a bad contract? And you look at the Coyote side, Roussel, Beagle, Lou Yerkson, those were all at the time, in 2021, one, um, one year left on the deal. They were bad contracts. All three of them, bad contracts, for sure. Overpayments, but... The thing about that was, um, they only had one year left, and they gave a first round pick and a second round pick, and plus a seventh round pick. Becoming Dylan Gunther, or uh, you know, the one we're kind of talking about here that really stings for um, the Vancouver Canucks, knowing that they could have, you know, Dylan Gunther, a prospect part of the team, and soon, maybe this year, this coming year, or the year after, he could be in the NHL, playing for the Vancouver Canucks. But no, that's not the case. Um, instead, it'll be for the uh, Arizona Coyotes. So, you know, um, getting Ekman Lawson was a huge mistake. Gollins is a good top nine guy, top six, top nine in that middle six, I should say. Um, really good player. I was really happy they got Garland, but when you saw that Ekman Lawson deal, it's the term that really stings. Um, you know, you look at the term and all that, it's just... Um, you go down to the 8.25, obviously, they, um, retained a little bit of it on the Coyotes, but still, that's just still such a steep cap hit, um, to pay for, you know, what we're looking into the next, um, four seasons, 2023 to 2027. That is a lot to have that guy with us. Um, and a guy who only gives you, you know, last year, 22 points and a minus 24, you know. Two goals, 26 in 54 games. That's just not worth it. You know, Ekman Lawson was a good defenseman. Back in the Coyote days when he was the captain, he had 44 points, 42 points. Even 55 points back in 15 and 16 season. Um, just a really good, solid defenseman. Um, he got paid for what he used to do, but now he's 31. Hopefully he gets a cheap deal, plays on a contender. Um, because he can go like Carolina or something like that. Uh, I thought about that. And, you know, all like the Oilers would be an interesting one. I'm sure they will ask about him on a cheap deal. Um, then, I would say the Jets for defense, but like, who even knows about the Jets with the rebuild and whatever they're doing with the course. So he probably said, yeah, not going now. Or maybe the Maple Leafs, you know, Maple Leafs might go for him too. Uh, you know, with Brad G. Living adding to the defense core. Um, just a couple guys to think about. Maybe Tampa Bay. You know, you never know how cheap he could go. But um, definitely something, a big mistake, and they're paying for it. Look what they're paying for. Um, the cost. Um, first of all, Coyotes will be paying 290000 Um, Or actually, the cap pit is 20000 Never mind. Um, this coming season, then 320, then 650 k. Couple season 290, 290 for the rest. That's not bad for the Coyotes. Really isn't, because of retaining salary. That's not bad. Like I said, at all. It's just what the Coyotes have to deal with. Look at the cap that they have to pay. 146 thousand this year. Not a big deal. Totally fine. Um, it'd be great to get rid of that. You know, eight million, right? But the next year is two point three million. Then the next two years is four point seven. That's a depth player or two, two depth players. So there you go. That could be two guys in your top nine. Could be one guy in your top six, maybe. You know what I mean? And then you go down for the next four years at two point one million. I'm sure they're betting on the uh, cap to go up by four million. You know, he'll, every season, 4 million, 4 million, maybe something like that, whatever, 2 million heal, 4 million heal. But still, you know, 2 million, 4 million, 
it, it still stings. And you got this going on into 2023. Uh, I mean, not 2023. Um, 2020, 30 to 2021, which is weird to say that. 2020, 30, 2020, 31, which is crazy. Um, so long um, thing they had to pay for, for sure. But man, that stings. Um, for the next eight years for them. So, yeah, this is what they got to pay. The price to pay for taking on a bad contract, which made no sense. But we'll see what happens. Um, also, before I end the video, I want to talk about some other bio candidates trying to move on from them and don't want to pay the cap at untradeable. Just want to get rid of them and have a little cap relief. Um... But sometimes it might sting them like the Zach Parisi deal and the Ryan Suda from Minnesota. Definitely stinging them right now. But, you know, they made the playoffs this year. And they have a young team. They're getting there. So, there you go. Uh, first off, I want to look at a couple. Uh, just to give, you know, kind of idea. New GM for the um, Maple Leafs, obviously. Brad Tree Living. Um, you got Matt Murray, who just gets injured constantly. Throughout the season, doesn't matter. Um, it just happens every season. We know that. Um, looking at how what it could be six point two five for the next year. Maybe if you retain six million, um, isn't he retained right now? Yeah, at four point six, one point five. The auto senators will be tiny. So, um, look at his trade history. That was when an auto would trade for him, and you buy him out. Um, to pay one point uh six hundred eighty seven thousand, and then the next year you pay two million, and then obviously for the um the sends you pay two hundred twenty nine thousand and six hundred sixty six uh thousand. So, um, that's what you have for Matt Moe. If you think you're gonna, you know, the year after two million, is that really gonna benefit? Is that bad? Yes, no. Or do you try to trade him or something and you give up an asset? Like a pick or something or two, a prospect or something, you know. Maybe you do that instead. That's the uh, place you go down instead. Um, moving on to the next one people have been thinking about. I think you kind of, you hold off on this one. And this is Brendan Gallagher. He has four years left from a $6.5 million deal. He's been injured also. His modified no trade uh, list, six teams. Um, been in Montreal his whole career, 675 games. Um, just unbelievable, 71 games in the, for the Habs in the playoffs. Uh, this year, only 37 games, 8 goals, 6 assists, 14 points, minus 5. In the beginning of the year, he was healthy, ready to go after being injured the last couple years. And now he finds himself injured again last year. Uh, I understand why this is, this is a, you know, a favorite. To buy him out because it's his injuries and all of that at 6.5 million and you know but they are a rebuilding team still they are still not expected to make the playoffs next year um but you know what i mean hey you look at that 3.75 i remember that deal for six years such a bargain of a deal and now he has that 6.5 but man uh, that was such a good deal 30 goals he was getting at you know a little over 3 million was fantastic so you buy him out we'll see what you get um, yeah, so you'll be paying, you know, for the next, man, the next eight seasons, you're going to be paying, you know, a lot here. Um, the first two seasons, not much, then two million, then four million, two, 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 two. But, you know, I, I don't, I don't see a rush. Like, the, like, you know, like the, um, Canucks, they're going to rush because they can't, um, they're trying to make the playoffs. Obviously, Montreal's just going to try to keep building, right? So, I don't see the rush with Brendan Gallagher. Um, anyways, I'm just going to do two more. There's other guys out here, but um, I'm going to pick another Hab here. Uh, Mike Hoffman. A lot of people hate on Mike Hoffman because all he can do is score. But if he doesn't score like the last couple of years as much as he usually does, then he's useless. You know what I mean? He's a three-point... He has a three-year at 4.5. Last year on his deal, do you buy him out this summer? I say no. Because last year, 4.5, it, it's like, why would you do that to yourself? Um, buy him out. Let's see what happens. 
1.66 for the next two years, this coming year that you have to. I, I don't know. I, I just don't see how it's worth it. I don't think it is. I really don't. So, yeah. Um, not worth it for me. And for the last one, maybe this one is worth it. I'm thinking about this one. I don't know. But that's Blake Wheeler. Uh, he's 20, he's 36 years old, but he still gets a lot of points. He's a guy that after 30, he was getting more points than he did in his 20s, uh, which is rare at times, right? Finishing up an $8.25 million deal. Uh, submits a five-team no-trade list. Maybe those five teams just... Oh, uh, well, I mean, those are the teams he can't go to. Maybe they're like five on the bottom of the league or something like that. So maybe he does get traded. Then uh, buy out. And, you know... You retain 50%, or you re maybe you don't want to retain 50%, but um, maybe you just want to get rid of this deal, and that's it. Maybe play him out into the deadline. I don't know. 55 points in 72 games, not bad for him. Six points in five games in the playoff run for the Jets. Um, You know, he was the most productive player in the playoffs almost for the Jets this year. Um, If you buy him out, you're always going to have to pay for two years. Yeah, 2.75 for the next two years. That's not bad. Just saying. What if it doesn't work out and you just want to move on from Blake Wheeler and say, you know what? I don't care. I don't care about getting assets and picks and all that. Because probably not much of anything. They probably look at the trade market and say, hey, who wants Blake Wheeler? Anyone? And if nothing happens then, 2.75 for the next two years, maybe they say, you know what? Let's just go for it and get rid of it. Move on, 2.75. If they're moving on from the core players like Connor Hallebuck, obviously, you know, um, Pierre-Lou Dubois, uh, Blake Wheeler, you know, Mark Scheifele, if they're moving on guys like that, 2.75 for the next two years, who cares? Then, you know, you're going to be a rebuilding team anyways. So, you know, you move on from Ehlers also. I wouldn't move on from Connor, but he might want to be moved out pretty soon anyways. If this happens. So, look at what he has. You know, all those games, 922 points. Mostly with the Winnipeg Jets, like the longest Winnipeg Jet ever. Um, and, you know, Atlanta for one year. Boston, originally drafted by the Coyotes. Didn't want to sign with the Coyotes. Didn't think they were good enough. You know, so, it's just kind of cool to see what happens here. So, thanks for watching. I know we talked about Ekman Moss and some other guys. So I'll see you next video.